Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us and for listening to our presentation of Surf Scene. This TV show is presented by Dream Team, Madison Lewis, Jacqueline Keone, Robert Richardson, Haley Miller, Joshua Ortez, and Anna Niza. Warning! Dream Team presents to you Surf Scene, where a variety of management skills and concepts are displayed, intended for people in the workforce between the ages of 20 to 50 years old. Surf Scene is a leading beachwear and souvenir shopping destination located on Clearwater Beach, Florida, providing tourists and locals with everything from sunscreen, clothing, shoes, beach accessories, and toys. They are well known due to their friendly staff and merchandise within the store. It is operated by four employees named Brian, Dustin, Kate, and Angel. Angel is the newest staff member who likes to take risks, and it definitely starts to show. Suspicious activity is occurring in the store, and no one knows who is behind it all. Staff members are conflicted and try to find out who is behind the madness. Kate is offered a deal and even asks her boyfriend Mark on his take on the situation. Fingers start to get pointed, drama occurs, and solutions are figured out as the show progresses. With proper management skills and working as a team, they find out who the culprit is. Each character displays different management styles and worth ethic throughout the show. Surf Scene is a very diverse speech shop. The staff all have different personalities, morals, and educational backgrounds. The target audience for this show is directed towards anyone in the workforce between the ages of 20 to 50 years old. People of this age group can follow along with this storyline easily and can even relate to this TV show perhaps in some ways. Now meet our first character of Surf Scene, Brian Campus, the out of the loop manager. Brian is an ambitious and headstrong manager of Surf Scene in Clearwater Beach, Florida. He is goal-driven and makes sure that Surf Scene is working to its optimal potential. Brian graduated from the University of South Florida at the top of his class and has always been a great leader and a model citizen. His six-figure salary affords him the ability to live in a three-story house right on the beach with his wife and two children. He's an extrovert who is willing to go above and beyond for his employees. Brian is a great communicator and his problem-solving skills are top-notch. He has led the Clearwater Surf Scene location to be the best store in the region, and the corporate is very impressed with his management skills, as they see much potential in his, his abilities. The main concept is that while Brian is great at managing his store and the team at Surf Scene, there is suspicious activity happening around the store that he is unaware of but is soon to find out about. Meet our second character, Dustin Williams, the whistleblower. Dustin is a student at the University of South Florida pursuing a bachelor's degree in management. Not only does he have the looks, but he's a straight-A student who never cheats on his assignments. He has been employed at Surf Scene since it opened eight years ago. For that reason, most employees get a hem when they have a question or a concern. With his dedication to Surf Scene over the years, he is expecting to get promoted within the next year. He makes decent money for only being 21 years old. He's very good at his job and knows how to sell products to customers. He has the potential to be a leader and is not fooled easily. He is highly intelligent and always looks out for the store's best interests. The main concepts that he's going to be involved in throughout the show include whistleblowing and ethical decision making. He's practical, trustworthy, reliable, knowledgeable, and outgoing. Now, meet our third character, Kate Lopez. She's also a whistleblower and... She's a key holder at Surf Scene. Kate earned her associate's degree from a local college in Illinois, then made the life-changing decision to move to Clearwater with her boyfriend to start a new life. Currently, she's been working her way through college at various retail jobs until she fully decides on what she wants to get her bachelor's degree in. Kate has been at Surf Scene for a total of four months now and is, a, is the new key holder. She worked under Brian at a previous job and is very competitive. She takes her job seriously and wants to make a good impression on her new work peers and her boss, Brian. She's very confident in her intuition and decision-making abilities. She always sticks to her morals and does the right thing when confronting hard decisions. The main concepts that she's going to be involved in is whistleblowing and illegal and unethical conduct of one of the characters. 
Also, Kate uses the company's code of conduct, training, and communication to ultimately influence her decision and behavior. Now, let's meet our fourth character, Angel Douglas. He's the laid-back manager and the Sir Scene Thief. Angel is laid-back, yet extroverted manager at Sir Scene. He's very sociable and views work as more of a social experience rather than a place to make a living. Around Sir Scene, Angel is known as the mellow cool guy by all the customers, and he is loved by his employees because of his push-over personality. Things tend to slide right by when Angel is left in charge. Angel is a single father of four living on the outskirts of the beach. Although he's a manager and makes a decent amount of money, he often struggles financially. Angel tends to take the easier way out of things instead of thinking rationally and morally. He finds himself getting into trouble and makes another irrational decision that may lead him to being fired. He masks his financial struggles with his laid-back persona, but is not a rational or good decision maker. Meet our fifth character of Sir Scene, Mark Soltz, Kate's boyfriend. He's hardworking, outgoing, a team player, and faithful. A rather unsettling individual, he has spent a lot of his life working low-paying jobs and generally struggling with life in general. Mark works at a local oyster shack where his job includes washing dishes, sweeping floors, and occasionally cooking. As he has been sitting back waiting for life to give him a little bit of a break, Kate gives him the news of what Angel has been doing. Thinking it may finally be what he needs to get ahead, he tells her to go ahead and do it. Though, when Kate goes to work the next morning, he starts to think. Regardless of how things are, he shouldn't ask Kate to go against things that she believes in. The main concept he will be participating in is ethical decision making. He will see how much his decisions affect Kate and Surf Scene. Now for the sneak peek of Surf Scene. Episode 1 is the introduction of Surf Scene and Conflict Arises. Episode 2 is the Department Collaboration. Episode 3 talks about managerial roles and managerial ethics. Episode 4 is Communication and Negotiation. Episode 5 is Classical Decision Making. And Episode 6 is Managerial Problem Solving. And then Episode 7 is the Group Reflections. Episode 1 Introduction to Surf Scene and conflict arises. This episode will describe a normal day at the Clearwater Beach shop, describing every employee's duties, personalities, and manager concepts more in depth. During this episode, it shows a scene where Kate is working with Dustin and Angel. The shift goes well, and they sold a vast amount of merchandise for the day. After all the employees do their chores, they are able to close up the store for the night. When Kate sees out the register, she notices that the money in the drawer is short. She notices that the numbers are not adding up correctly for the day. She decides to do some further investigation and recounts the drawer one more time. She thought she just miscounted, but finds out it is still wrong. She's conflicted and unsure what to do in this situation. Does this have to deal with an employee, or is it a mistake on the register? Watch episode 2 to find out what happens next. Episode 2, De Department Collaboration. In episode two, Kate becomes even more suspicious as she's noticing a batch of odd returns every few days. She knows for a fact that it must be one of the employees. The whole shift, she's not her normal bubbly self. She likes to think that her management style is exceptional and everyone follows the store policies. She's constantly watching over customers and employees so she knows everything is running smoothly. She's strict and very well organized, but this suspicious activity is throwing her off. Kate, as a new key holder at the store, knows she needs to handle the situation fast. She talks to Dustin privately about the situation. She does not know whether she should just call everyone in for a work meeting or let someone fess up. She loves to give people the benefit of the doubt and wants to fix this situation quickly. Kate discusses with Dustin on what actions to take going further. Will someone admit to their actions sooner than later? Is someone at risk for their job? Should Kate use a code of ethics? Is her management style effective? Watch episode 3 to find out what happens next. Episode 3, Managerial Roles and Managerial Ethics. In this scene, Dustin is working with Angel. Dustin realizes suspicious activity that morning before the store opens for business. 
He decides to confront Angel himself to figure out why he has been by the register for so long when there are no customers. When Dustin confronts Angel, Angel informs Dustin that he's just doing a return over the phone, which is against store policy, and that he had got it approved by the store manager, Brian. Dustin then gets very uncomfortable because he knows that it's not what Brian would want. Dustin is conflicted on whether he should call Kate and inform her on the situation. He just isn't sure whether he should question Angel because he's his assistant manager. Dustin decides to not make the situation a big deal and keeps quiet. He goes home feeling sick to his stomach and knows something is just not right. The next day, Dustin reports the activity to Kate due to the emotional stress it is causing him. They talk about the incident and what they are going to do next. Kate notices something is up with Angel and they find out that he has been making the false returns. Kate is a little taken back by Angel's response to Dustin because Brian would never allow Angel to do such thing. Will she confront Angel or let it slide? Watch episode 4 to find out. Episode 4, Communication and Negotiation Kate and Angel show up to work. Privately, she decides to confront him in the office and ask him about his opinion of the false returns that he has been doing. She is impatient to know what he thinks. Angel is in shock but explains to Kate that he has been the one that has been making these false returns and keeping the cash for an unfortunate reason. He is struggling financially because he is a single father and needs to support his four kids. He explains to Kate that his bills are piling up and he can hardly afford to feed his children. Angel offers Kate a deal if she keeps it a secret and doesn't report it to Brian. The deal is tempting and Kate questions if it's worth her position at surf scene or not. Will Kate accept the deal? Or will she tell Brian about Angel's false returns? Watch episode 5 to find out what happens next. Episode 5, Classical Decision Making Kate confides in her boyfriend Mark. Mark gives Kate advice telling her to keep the cash and that no one would figure it out. Mark loves extra cash and believes that Angel is giving Kate a deal of a lifetime. Kate becomes conflicted because she could easily earn more cash and that means she has a little more to spend on her wants and desires. She ends up explaining to Mark that she must stick to her morals because she would feel awful about doing something like that. She does not feel comfortable working at the shop while having to keep a big secret. She would be potentially risking her job after working herself up to Keyholder. Kate then makes her decision and decides to pull Brian aside. Brian and Kate talk in the office together as she discloses the information. Brian confirms that she never told Angel it is okay to do a return over the phone and is shocked by the incident. Brian and Kate come up with a game plan on how they will handle the situation. How will this game plan work out for the employees of Surf Scene? Keep an eye out for Episode 6 to find out. Episode 6, Managerial Problem Solving Brian is left with a decision to make regarding Angel's unacceptable behavior at the store. This episode begins with Brian approaching Angel and taking him into his office to discuss the situation of the undocumented returns. Angel is nervous and showing all the signs of a guilty party who has just been caught. He's sweaty, shaky, and thinking about if he will still be employed at the end of this meeting. Brian, on the other hand, is calm and collected, considering the situation. His extroverted tendencies and his communicative, managerial approach takes over as he tries to calm Angel down and tells him that he will figure out the best way to handle this issue. Although Brian is upset and feels betrayed over the dishonesty from Angel, he knows a hysterical reaction will only make things worse. Brian tells Angel to head home for the day and that he will be in contact with him to let him know his decision. Brian must decide if he should give Angel a warning or let him go. He's torn because Angel is the assistant manager and very beneficial to the company. But he also knows this was an accident of disloyalty and he doesn't know if he can still trust Angel. Brian uses rational problem solving and decides that he must make the hard choice of firing Angel. He stands to the company's policies and will use the situation as a learning point for future managers at Surf Scene. He apologetically lets Angel know that he will not be returning to Surf Scene. Reflections. For grammar member Jacqueline, her responsibilities include going through the manuscript line by line and finding grammar and spelling errors that compromise the quality of the material. She will also make sure that the word choice contributes to the overall tone of the storyline and will examine the document for inconsistencies in the theme and style. She will be playing the role of Brian in this television show. For group member Anna, her responsibilities include 
overseeing the animation in this TV show. She'll help make this project visually appealing with the interesting effects throughout. She'll be playing the role of Kate in this project. For group member Madison, her responsibilities include turning all the group assignments in, motivating her group members, and encouraging them to submit their work in by a deadline. She'll be the voice of this project, help in editing and play the role of Dustin. For this project, for group member Haley, she's going to be in charge of being the evaluation manager and the monitor, as well as assisting Anna with the role of Kate in the show. Her duties as evaluation manager include reviewing all the work before it is submitted, researching various material to benefit the project, and helping make decisions on what direction our group wants to move towards. Group member Robert, his role is to oversee all the other sections of the project to see where anyone may need help or other forms of assistance, as well as generally helping people stay on pace with the project to meet the group deadlines. He'll be playing the role of Mark in Surf Scene. For group member Joshua, his role is being the project analyst, where he oversees creating solutions for potential problems that the group might encounter. He's responsible for revising what can be included in the project and suggesting ideas that can improve the overall project. He'll be playing the role of Angel for this show. You do not want to miss this TV show. Stay tuned for episode one.